Without further ado, let's let's go back and, and revisit a couple of things we talked about the other day. So we had uh, we had talked about widgets, right? Now I just want to uh, to point out that all of the stacks that I'm going to share with you today that I'm going to talk about today are um, in our Digit 310 server under the lesson materials link. I'm mainly going to be working out of uh, number 13, mobile native controls, and number 20 for some reason. I'm sorry, it's it's oddly numbered because this year I I changed the order in which I did things from previous years. So, but but you'll be looking for native controls and sensors. So I want to start by looking at, on our schedule. We started talking about mobile specific controls and, and we spent a little bit of time talking about widgets. I'd like to, to just uh, touch on one more topic regarding widgets. So if I go over to live code and create a well, no, in fact, rather than creating a stack, I'm going to open the one that we that we looked at the other day. And this is called um, mobile and widgets dot live code. That one, remember seeing that one the other day. So as you recall, widgets are specialized controls that that do something very specific. And there, there are actually, notice I put in two different cards here. One I set up to look more like, like uh, Android. The other one I set up to look more like iOS. There are a couple of widgets that uh, emulate, or actually not emulate, they enable mobile specific controls. I mentioned the other day that if you just use live code controls on your um, iOS or Android applications, they look bad. Uh, they're, they're simply meant to, to sort of function at a very basic level, but really you have to create a mobile specific interface for it to look right on uh, a mobile application. So, so that's where widgets help us. I, I talked about, for example, the header bar, the nav bar. I talked about uh, these segment, the segment widget, the, uh, the switch widget. But there's also one called an iOS button widget, which looks like right there. You can see that, an iOS native button. And they are very similar in function to a regular live code button, but they are somehow uh, more iOS native e, and uh, and so sometimes that can be an option. Uh, I have found the iOS native button to be sort of minimally useful, as you'll see in just a moment when I when I take it online. Um, more useful, I found is the Android button. It looks like an actual button. It scripts like an like a regular live code button. So here here is the script for the Android button. Uh, and this is doing something very similar uh, very simple I should say just showing showing a, a spinner which is this kind of um, widget right here. Uh, just sort of a uh, a widget that allows you to hide it and show it to uh, to indicate kind of a wait state of some kind. But one thing, the thing that I that I wanted to point out with this is that when you use widgets, you've got to be careful to make sure that they are included in your build when you build for uh, an either a simulator, emulator, or um, an actual device. And the way that you do that is fairly straightforward. You go to the file menu, you go to the standalone application settings, 
And in the general tab, uh, you look under this first section here, right? So, um, there we go. So right here where it says inclusions, and then specifically what you want to do is, is click select inclusions for standalone application. And when you, normally what happens, notice what it says right here at the top one. This is the default. Search for required inclusions when saving the standalone application. And what that means is when you go ahead, when you, when you go to save it for a standalone, Live Code does its level best to scan through your stack and try to figure out which things you've included, including widgets, what things you have used in your stack. The problem is it, it does about an 80% good job. In other words, sometimes it misses things. So it's, it's best instead to use manual selection of inclusions. And when you do that, um, you need to, um, let's see. You need to select the inclusions tab right here, and it shows you it shows you a whole list of different things. Now notice that there's a whole bunch of these things at the top that maybe you don't recognize, but notice here, here's the Mac native button widget. So you just need to make sure that the things that you want to include are there. Let's say we, we put in an Android native widget, a native field. We click that. Uh, we're using switch buttons, so we make sure that's clicked. Segmented controls, which is this one on the bottom, we make sure that's clicked. So you just sort of scan down. We we do have a spinner in there, and you just it just depends on you kind of being aware of what you put into your stack and making sure that it's clicked. The iOS native button, for example, right? And then somewhere in here you'll find uh, an Android native button. There it is, right there. Um, the, the ones you're usually interested in are, are closer to the top. There's a whole bunch of other things down the, down the list that you probably are not going to need to worry about. Uh, or at least if, if you do, you'll, you'll have been aware that you use them, so you'll, you'll click them. But the ones that we're really interested today, interested in today are the, the, uh, the widgets. So once you've done that, then you can go ahead and do your build. And those the libraries that support those widgets will be in, included in your build. Um, so let me show you what that looks like. Uh, first of all, Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to share the iPad, iPhone rather. Okay, so there's my iPhone and I've got... Um, widget demo, there it is. So this, this is what it looks like on my iPhone. Uh, notice those things work. And here's what I was talking about. Oh, sorry. So I'm I've, obviously I've got to touch it with my fingers so you can't really see other than the results. Right there, there's that iOS button. You, you can see it, it highlighted when I clicked it. And what I'm doing with that is I'm just showing a, a spinner when I touch it and hiding it after a couple of seconds. Uh, and this is what I mean by when I say the, I, the iOS native button, I, I can't quite figure out how it's supposed to be useful, but it's there. Uh, the, and the, the reason I say that is because, yeah, it's got a label, but it's not really, 
it's not really showing me a, a border. You can't put icons in it. I, I suspect that what we're dealing with is a, a widget that's, that's not quite 100% complete. So um, it's, um, it's, it's marginally useful, I would say, at this point. Okay, let me show you now what it looks like um, on the Android. Okay. Okay, so there's that Android screen, and here's the widget demo. So obviously, it, it's it's showing the card that is more appropriate to Android, and and there's the Android native button. Um, Again, it's. I th I think the advantage of having that native button widget is that it just looks more Androidy, and this is this is showing a, the uh, the spinner widget that I that I mentioned. So it's just showing it and hiding it after a couple of seconds. Okay. So that then is what those things look like on iOS and Android. Okay, so going back to my desktop. Okay, everybody seeing the desktop again? Yep. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to get rid of that. And get rid of that for a minute. So the other day we talked, we, we started talking about mobile specific controls and, uh, and I opened this stack called test mobile controls live code. Again, you, you'll be able to find it in, um, uh, mobile native controls, test mobile controls. That's the one right there. You'd want to right click and download it as we have been doing all along. Okay, so it looks like that. I've got it set up for for a tablet dimension. We talked about uh, the easy stuff that it can do. Yeah, that's it. So I I labeled that the easy stuff that just works. And I think we talked about dialog boxes. The commands are absolutely identical with, with a small uh, enhancement for the mobile world in that you can use the with hint addition to, to put sort of a, a light gray uh, example of the type of thing that you want the person to, to type in on the ask dialog. Um, and then once they they click it and start typing, that hint goes away. So uh, we talked about pop-up keyboards, which is is pretty simple to use. Uh, you'll see examples in the stack of usage of this. Um, basically, set mobile keyboard type lets you choose what the t keyboard likes when you um, when you select that field and here are all of the options of different keyboard types okay the this other stuff I sort of threw you to the wolves and I said look at it and try it out the little bit harder stuff but especially the mobile pick uh, command the mobile date the mobile pick date command and the activity indicator are pretty straightforward so I'll, I'll uh, I'll have a look at what those do. Okay, there's the keyboards we talked about. Okay, here's the picker control. So what I have done is I've simply, in the card script, defined a do pick custom handler and I call it from the button and that's where the mobile pick 
command is used. Now the mobile pick command, as you'll see in the web page, has one, two, three, four, five possible different parameters that you can send to it. Uh, the two required ones are the list of options and the initially checked thing, the initial choice. And then you can set styles and you can set the button names, you can set a view as well. And those, by the way, if, if you look in the dictionary, you'll find that pretty well documented under mobile pick. So what I have done is I've created right here, um, So I've created a list, put it into T list, and it's just a comma separated list, or sorry, it's a return separated list. As you can see, I, I first set it up with commas and then I, I replaced the commas with returns. Uh, and then checking to make sure I'm in the mobile environment, I call the mobile pick command. And what I want after I execute that is to look at the result of the pick command and put it into the selection. Okay. Anyway, I'll, I'll let you, um, I'll let you look at that. Whoops. On your own, if you'd like to do one of those, but this is how it works. Okay. Let's see, I think I got to switch to the iPad here. Oh, actually, I think I can do that on the simulator. All right. So here's the iPad simulator. Oh, I'm still in. I'm still in annotate. All right, so here's this, here is the picker. So on iOS, it looks like this. It's, it's the way the iOS picker looks. The iOS has the option of doing multiple columns of things that you can pick. That's an iOS only uh, option. Um, Android doesn't support it. So, so the way that that is set up is do pick multiple is called from this button right here. And you can see that on iOS only, you can do list one, the the initial selection on list one, list two, the initial selection on, on list two, and then the names of the buttons come after that. Uh, same with the mobile pick command, the name of the button or the set of buttons comes comes last. Okay, so that then is how that shows up on the iOS simulator. Okay. Um, I think I'll, I won't show that on Android because it's very similar. The next one is the date picker. So that, again, is fairly straightforward. Mobile pick date, and it's got a whole bunch of optional, um, optional uh, parameters that you can supply. And uh, because they're optional, I've just left them blank here. But notice that I can choose to do a date one, or I can choose to do under choose time. I can do I can label that a time one. So on the simulator, what you see is this, and these are familiar to anybody that's used an, an iOS device. Uh, 
you choose that that date and uh, it reports it back as the result. Okay. Here's the time picker for iOS. Again, very, very uh, familiar looking if you've used iOS and reports it back in, again, um, there it is in the result. Now iOS, again, this is an iOS only feature, allows you to do a combined picker where you've got the date on one side and the time on the other. And it'll report that back as in the result. So there's the, uh, the, the combined picker, which again is iOS only, and you just give it a type of date time. Okay. Now, um, let me pull up the Android screen real quick. There it is, test mobile. Okay. So we'll just swipe forward to the pickers. So that's what the date picker looks like on my Android device. No, t no difference in the scripting and live code, but you get a, a completely appropriate specific date and time picker on Android. Uh, this one I really like. I don't know if this is is specific to uh, to Android to uh, excuse me to Samsung the Galaxy that I have, but I really kind of like it. So you can choose the hour, click on the minute, choose the minute, okay, and then you get the time back. And again, obviously this the uh, iOS one doesn't work on Android. Next up, we've got another fairly simple one, the activity indicator. Uh, there are two. There's one that's, again, iOS specific. And that, that does the little daisy wheel um, spinning, uh, spinning indicator. And uh, back in the day when uh, Live Code was only supporting iPhones, they named this iPhone activity indicator start, and then its companion command, iPhone activity indicator stop. So another kind of verbose one. Um, the other one is common to both, mobile busy indicator start, mobile busy indicator stop. So in these, in these um, uh, indicator commands, you can specify a type and you can specify a message that will that will appear when you do it. So, for example, in iOS, you see the little spinning white daisy wheel there on the on the left hand side. That's what the iOS indicator looks like. Here's the mobile busy indicator, which, again, is specific to specific to operating system. And let me show you real quick what it looks like on Android. So again, you can see that on Android, it's got its own Android-ish look rather than the iOS look. Uh, so a really nice job they've done with enabling device specific and device appropriate um, controls with just a single command in live code makes it easy for us. Okay, sorry, lots of switching back and forth. Move these simulators off screen for a minute. The next one I wanna look at, uh, this actually, is quite a bit more involved, and I won't say much about it except that um, it works 
for the most part. Um, I'll show you an example of how this one works without going too much into the scripting. Um, so I'm going to share the iPad I've got here now. Whoops. The reason I'm showing this on the iPad, there we go, is that um, the camera doesn't work on the simulator. So you really got to You've really got to test it on a device. So here we go. Uh, uh, dictation, no thank you. So with the mobile, this is the, the mobile pick photo command that's that I'm using in the stack. So I can either choose a photo from, um, from my photo library. Let's see, choose photo. How come it's not choosing? Let's see. Here's a fascinating picture of our lab. Um, so you can see that I I can go into the existing photo library, photos that exist on the device, and show those. Close that. But more interestingly, I can look at the camera features and see what that device has on it. So this one has uh, two cameras, a front and a rear, and both cameras can, do, can support both photo and video. And if I choose take photo, I can go into the camera, take the photo, and use photo, and it comes back into my stack, you can see. Now I can even save that photo on the device library by clicking Save Photo. Did I get it? Yeah, there it is. So now it's, now it's on my device. You can see in the, in the screen in the, the list of photos. Anyway, that's that's a little more involved to to get to work. So I won't uh, I won't go into that in too much depth, but just to say that you can and look at that script and see if it's interesting to you. It's uh, I like have, I say. I have a quick question. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. About that one. So when you take a picture um, and then it shows up on your card, um, in the app, is that picture that shows up is, does live code automatically put like what, uh, an image, um, I don't remember what it's called on the left. I'm image object. Image object yeah. Yeah, on the left hand side. Yeah. I'll show you real quick. I'll show you real quick what I'm yeah. doing. Right. So there's where you're using mobile pic fo photo and you're specifying camera. Uh, oh, sorry. This is what, well, this is the, this is the conniptions I had to go through for Android. Uh, mm -hmm. For whatever reason, it's, it was a little bit more uh, involved. Um, but here it is, mobile pic photo camera. And then this specifies the size, the, the height and the width that it should, uh, that it should be displayed at, which I've defined up here above. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I did notice when I tried this on my Android device yesterday that it was a little bit finicky, so I may need to go in and, and tweak this scripting a little bit. But, and so uh, it it puts the picture, and it's called template image. Is that the name of it? And then you have to put it somewhere else to keep it there, or like once it's on the card, like what see. can you do with it? Set the visible of template image to false. Set the resize image to good. Sorry, it's been a while since I've looked at this code, so I'm just reviewing it real quick. Um, oh, I see. Okay. So um, the template image 
for every live code object, fields, buttons, images, there's a thing called the template image. And that's, that's sort of a, that was the name implies, it's the template for any new object of that type that you create. Mm -hmm. and, and so by setting the properties of the object before you use the, the properties of the template before you use it, it will make sure that any new image that's created uh, has those properties. And, and so that's why, that's what I was doing here. So then okay. the camera is going to use, it's going to create an image automatically. And then you can set the name of that image. Um, sorry. Oh, that's, I put that in for testing for some reason. I can hmm. set the height and width after the fact. Uh, oh, I remember, now I remember why I did this. It turns out that mobile pic photo on iOS supports setting the, the, the height and width before. On Android, you have to set it after the fact. So, so that's why I did it here after the fact. Mm. And uh, so I set the height in which I, and I set the location and then I showed it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, um, it's, it's, it's reasonably simple, but yeah, but takes a little bit of fiddling to get it to work the way you want it to, to work. Cool. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so, so you can, you can examine that in detail if, if you're interested in that. Um, right. So let's talk about the more involved stuff. Okay. Now, as you have seen, when we just create an iOS, sorry, when we just create, uh, I'm going to open up a recent file. So here's the thing that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes called sensor demo. In a nutshell, sensors are things that are built into the device. Uh, but, and, and this, this little uh, simple stack that I created, I just used regular iOS, whoops, shouldn't have done that. I, sorry, I just used regular live code controls like radio buttons and, and, um, and so forth, uh, regular buttons, regular fields. And so when I take this into the, Let me just let me just uh, take this into the simulator so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, test it. All right. So here's the iOS phone simulator, and you notice that that the uh, the controls on the simulator don't look very much like they look on 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 live code itself they got these kind of weird looking diamond things and um uh the the scroll bars are kind of funky looking but they, it just doesn't look great so um what live code allows you to do is create what are called native uh, uh, native controls. But unfortunately, there's no widget for it. There's no thing you can drag on to the screen like buttons like we're used to doing. You just have to script the whole thing. And the basic process for doing that is when you arrive on the card, you use this mobile control create command. You say, I want to control, I want to create a type of control and I want to create it with this name. Okay. There are five different mobile native controls that you can create in live code. There's a browser, which is basically an embedded browser. There's a scroller object a player object, which we'll actually look at a little bit more in, in depth in a later lesson. And then there are two text field objects. So in, 
a single line input and a multi line uh, text control. So I'm going to I'm going to show you what those look like. So the basic process is you get to the card, you create it, and then something like this, where under where it says example. So mobile control create. I want to create an an input uh, field, and I want to call it name input. And then this is this sort of convenience if I need to ref refer to it by its control ID later, I can. After you create it, then you use this command called mobile control set, naming the device, name, naming the control you just created. So I named it name input. I use mobile control set to set the properties. And this is the format that it is. So the name of the control, the property you want to set, and the value you want to set it to. So here I'm setting name name input. I'm setting the, the rect of it, the, basically the size and position of it to this value. Then when you leave the card, you got to make sure you delete the command. Again, it's a little bit... Um, it's a little involved. It's not terribly difficult. There, there end up being quite a few lines of code that you may have to write to do it. But what you end up with is a, is a much cleaner looking um, object in your mobile environment. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a sec. Um, in addition to that, you can, there are some, uh, there are some action commands, mobile control do, so if you want to set the focus of that screen to a specific um, text field, for example, you can use mobile control do, refer to the, in, to, the uh, to the control you just created and say, give it focus. Finally, there's, there's some messages that native controls generate so for example, on the scroller type control, if you, if you um, scroll it with, with a finger swipe, it sends this mobile, a scroller did scroll message and it, it reports how much horizontal scroll you gave it and how much vertical scroll you gave it. And that then will allow you to, uh, to change what's on the screen. Okay, so that's all a little, a little complicated, and I can't demonstrate it in live code because it only works in native. Excuse me, in the um, in the simulator on the device. So let me pull that up real quick and swipe over here. So here is an example of a native scroller used with a field. So you can see that as I swipe it, it does the scrolling as you're used to seeing on an iOS device. <clears throat> um, and I'll open up the script of this card so you can see what I've done to, to make it happen. Um, basically, I, I, I put all of the scripting into a... Uh, and a knit card handler that I wrote, just a custom handler. And on pre-open card, that's where I create everything. So you can see that um, here's the mobile control create command. And then there's a whole series of setting properties of that, of that scroller. And then finally, here's an example of that scroller did scroll message that it gets, that it's, that you send to it. I'm, I'm not going to spend much more time on that because, um, let's see, I want to get back to the simulator, uh, because it's not a really commonly used one. Here's an example of a scroller, for example, um, with an image. So a very large map of Asia. And you can see that I can scroll and it does that sort of bounce effect when you get to the edge. And again, that's all 
programmed in the card script. And in the interest of time, I think I'll just move on to the next thing, which is a little bit simpler. This is a single line input control. And uh, interestingly, live code, uh, excuse me, not live code, but the, the mobile operating systems themselves uh, make a difference between a single line text field and multiple line text field. And I think it's because so often when you make text fields, you you may be creating either a an input form like this, where you're entering, for example, your name and email and stuff. Or conversely, you might have, as I have on this, this next card, a larger control with a long text. So we'll look at those one at a time. So here on this card, You'll see, again, a long list of things. So again, I'm calling this init card handler, which is just a custom handler. And I'm creating a mobile control, an input, a single line input control. And I'm calling it name input. And then I am, um, I have a whole series of properties that I'm setting. So I'm setting the, the rectangular area of it. Oops, I scrolled the wrong way. I'm setting it to be visible. I'm setting it to be enabled. I'm setting it to be opaque, et cetera, et cetera. I'm setting a border style and so forth and so on. Background color, alpha channel, which is the amount of transparency that the control has. You can see that you can set font name and, and lots of different things like that. Okay, now on this card, I'm also creating a second control, input control for an email address. Um, and here's this, here are all of the properties that I'm setting. Notice that you can, one of the properties you can set is the keyboard type. So on the first control, I'm just making this an alphabet keyboard. On the second control, I'm making it an email style keyboard. Um, here is a message that the, the message input return key that the mobile control generates when you, when you hit return while you're in that field. And so it can control what happens when, that, when you do that. So here it is in the simulator, okay? So notice that here's the original stack. This is just a live code field. There's nothing next to the email label, but here, both of these get created. And you'll notice that when I select uh, one of those fields by touching it, it's, it makes, it changes to the different keyboards. Notice that the email keyboard has an at symbol and an underscore symbol and different things that the regular alphabet keyboard doesn't have. And then I can type things in here and so forth. Okay. Um, Right, so in here, I've changed the label of the return key to next, and it actually advances to the email field. Okay, so that's an example of, of this one. The next screen shows an example of a multi-line input control. Um, and he, here's where you see one of the advantages of using a mobile native, a mobile, specific control. Uh, so if I start typing on my touch screen here, notice that the spelling suggestions that you're used to seeing on your mobile devices, just they're just there. That's because with that uh, mobile control create, we are creating a control that is native to the mobile device and has all of the capabilities of the mobile device. Um, 
So notice I, I type J-U-S and it's giving me some suggestions and I can ch choose a suggestion. Um, one of my fun activities on a mobile screen is to, is to write a little story only based on the suggested words that come up. So I just got home from school and now I'm going to bed. So <laughs> early. <laughs> so um, I can, it, this should be a thing. I mean, people should be writing novels with this, I think, just to see what, um, what uh, the mobile device will will suggest to you and by way of of what should be the next word that you type um, so that one actually i did a little, a little more playing around on this screen so here's the here's the live code stack you'll notice that i was playing around with some buttons so on the top I created two iOS native buttons. In the stack itself, all you're seeing is a visual placeholder. They don't work. Uh, on the bottom, I created some Android native, an Android native field, and Android native buttons. Um, and that's that was just because I was playing around with it. But notice that I, I, I set up some buttons that will hide and show that field. Here are the, the iOS native fields that, that put information into that, that field there. Uh, the ones on the bottom, again, since I'm on an iOS simulator, it is not showing me um, anything except the placeholders. So obviously, if, you, if you're going to be sh doing this on, on iOS, you're going to hide those things on iOS and show them on Android. Um, let me show you what this looks like on my Android device. Okay, test mobile. There it is, okay. So this is my, uh, my Galaxy tablet. And again, if I, if I touch inside the field, meaning I wanna focus on the field, I can start typing, and it's got the uh, the suggestions. Uh, and so forth. Uh, I can I can do the the I can make it visible, I can make it enabled or disabled with those switches. And then here on the bottom, you can see the Android native buttons and the Android native field. Um, I think that the advantage of the Android native field widget is that you can create one of these without having to script it. And, and my, I think what Live Code intends eventually is for you is to create widgets that will create these these native controls without you having to script at all. So this is just sort of the initial look at, at that. Okay. Okay. So again, just just checking in on the the card script here. On my pre-open card, I call my init card handler. The init card handler is just a custom handler. And uh, there's where I do the mobile control create. And I'm setting some basic properties. Um, to the, the control with that name. And um, some other kind of housekeeping things, setting up the, the switch widgets the way they want them on, init, on when I initially come there. And then very important, 
whenever you do a mobile control create on a on a card you have to make sure that you delete it when you leave the card or it will be there superimposed on whatever card you you end up on after this so very important to do that whole cycle Con create set properties and delete when you leave okay so uh, that is a quick tour through all of the different ways that you can make controls that look right on your on your native uh, devices and simulators and uh, I've got a, a quick assignment that I want you to do so that you get some practice creating one of these things so that is here on the schedule okay so this is yeah we're on Thursday we're still a little bit behind but not too bad the Android or the mobile native controls stack part two and really all I want you to do is um, is create one of these native controls uh, my experience is that that the single or multi-line fields are a little easier to do but uh, just use that example on that very last card on that stack we've been looking at um, to create something like maybe this big field and a number of controls that will change properties of that so here's what I'm talking about so this switch widget actually uses the same mobile control set message uh, command as we used in the card script mobile control set and I name the uh, the native control that I want to change I name the property and I name the value for that property so in the widget I'm saying for control text field which is this large one on the top set the visible property to true or false which really matches whether so the highlighted of me means uh, whether or not the switch is highlighted or on okay so basically you need to supply a true false value there because visible is a true false true or false um, property so so what I want you to do is is have a look in the dictionary so I'm going to look up mobile control create in the dictionary there it is more mobile control create and you can see it has here are all of the different kinds of mobile controls you can create and I would suggest probably sticking with either input or multi-line and down here um, here's an example of what I just showed you mobile control create and then mobile control set so if I click over to mobile control set pro uh, command there's a long list of all of the properties that you can set for any mobile control that was created with mobile control create so global properties in, in other words all mobile native controls you can set these things uh, here are here are some others that only apply to iOS but if you scroll down to or toward the bottom so here's the single line text input specific properties that apply only to that so for example you can set a border style for iOS only um, and further down here's the multi-line text input specific properties that you can set um, so you can actually set a text property which is the actual beginning text of the field um, lots and lots of things you can set font size you can set text alignment and so forth so the idea here is let's see if I can show you this uh, 
Oh, no, I just I had it. I thought I had it on there, but I guess I don't. So let me bring up the uh, example stack. Uh, sorry, I'm having trouble finding it. I thought I had it all set up. The stack itself is called um, multi-line multi -line X solution. Oh, there it is. Okay. So in that, you can see that on the last card of this stack, I've set up some uh, some controls here that allow you to change various um, properties of the the field. So what they're doing is um, to take an example using mobile control set to set the text of this text field with some text that I've defined. So you can see that as an example of what I'd like you to do, but obviously don't just copy it. Figure out from, from the list of properties that you can set here, figure out ones that you could, you could create some controls to, uh, to show that you understand how to create the control and how to set the property of the controls. So that is the assignment for, for next time. This It's part two of this mobile native controls stack. The first one uh, was actually integrated into the one I had you do for today. Okay. So, so that's what I'd like you to do for next time. Um, uh, and again, you can use that that example to to kind of create your own variation on it. Then next time we're going to talk about some some things that are kind of fun, and that is how to access the remote sensors on your phone or your tablet. Now the sensors are things like. Um, okay. So what this allows me to do is say, okay, on board this device, I've got a GPS. I've got various sensors that allow me to specify what my location is. I can also basically do a little compass so my heading is now it's basically north, right? 360 degrees. You can you can show acceleration uh, along different axes. You can show rotation rate of your device. So I'm just I'm rotating my device in different along different axes so that you can see that 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 sensor is reading that. Anyway, that's just sort of a taste of of what we'll kind of look at next time. Uh, kind of fun. Your, um, your devices all have uh, sensors built into them that Live Code allows you to, to tap into. So that's what we'll look at a little bit next time. Okay, any questions before we, before we leave?